Zeek Analyzer, uh, Zeek Analyzer packages with Spicy, which Robin mentioned a little bit earlier. Benjamin, if you'd like to go ahead and share your screen, and we'll test your sound right quick. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? I can. So I muted Christian. He cannot hear me, right? Okay. I, he's out of the channel now. So. Okay, dokey. So you want to see my slides? Whether that works? Let me see. Um, he's going over time, so we have plenty, right? He will, he's keep, he will keep talking. Well, he's done now. He's back in the Slack channel. So, um, all right. All right, give me just a second. I'll introduce you and you can take it away. <clears throat> Welcome to Zeek Week 2021. We're here with Benjamin Banner, who's going to be speaking about creating Zeek Analyzer packages with Spicy. Uh, Benjamin, can you take a little bit of, uh, just take a moment, introduce yourself to everyone and then um, talk about uh, the Analyzer packages with Spicy. Well, thanks, Amber. So my name is Benjamin. I work at Corelight in the open source team, mostly um, together with Robin on Spicy. But I also like sometimes branch out into Zeek, of course, because there's an obvious interface, right? So I want to tell you about um, how to package Spicy analyzers for Zeek, right? So let's like refresh quickly for what Spicy actually is, if you haven't been if you kind of missed that. So let's write a simple um, na naive parser for CSV with spicy. So we have like a CSV file here, comma separated values. So let's assume that just um, separated by new lines, columns are separated by commas, and we don't have any of the hard problems that you have with CSV, right? So this list um, cuts off here. This goes on until under my table. So let's assume we can be naive and write a parser. So how would we do that with spicy? We'll declare some spicy module, CSV naive here. And then we would declare top, le top level type, which is a parser unit that will actually um, do the parsing for us. So what's our CSV data? It's just an ordered list of, of rows, right? The row is another parser, not a public parser, it's some implementation detail. And um, a row consists of columns. And you see like two big parts here in that column declaration. Columns are, when we pass them, it's some bytes on the wire, and we'll pass them until we see some new line, with that new line, right? So then we have extracted that bytes data. So once we're done with that, we can then convert that extracted data with some attributes that Spicy gives us. So this dollar dollar is the data we extracted, and we just split that at some byte sequence that is a comma, right? So now we have a ordered list, a vector of um, byte values, basically that's the bytes values, which is our different columns. And since we don't really care about these columns on the outside, we can also convert that full row data type. To have some, some struct basically anymore, we just um, extract the columns out of that. So then when we use that in that CSV data type above, we just have rows, which is a collection of, of um, vectors of values. And um, Spicy also gives us the option to hook into that whole parsing process. So here I have a very simple hook that is invoked whenever CS CSV value is successfully parsed. And we here we just have a side effect where we print data, but we could also, for example, um, trigger hooks for when we extract a single value or when we run into errors at different points or, or other places. So now we have implemented a simple parser for CSV. Let's see how that works. So we, here's again our data. Let's quickly install Spicy. So if we are on, on macOS, for example, we could um, tap the Zeek um, repository for brew that has a Spicy installation for us or a Spicy formula and that pulls in spicy and now we are done. Now we have spicy on our system and then we can just pipe the CSV data to a program spicy brings, spicy driver, which just takes that small grammar file that we saw previously, right? And that minus J flag tells it to just in time compile everything, hook up the input and to everything. And then we see the output from this small done hook that we wrote. So this is just the print directive. So we see that like we, so rows, that's like a value or like it's a field of our CSV data type is a vector of columns here, right? That contain bytes. So we recovered our data. So it's kind of neat. Now we're kind of happy, but then we want to actually, yeah, no, let's talk about what happens actually under the scenes. There's two, two things happening. 
So we, we start out with a grammar file that we wrote that's consumed by spicy driver in some JIT process, which then generates some ASTs for us, does like resolving all kinds of machinery, and then um, generates some file behind the scenes that we don't see ever. So this is in some temporary um, location by default. So then the JIT part is done and we are just like um, left with that HLTO file, which contains all the parsing logic that was in our grammar. And then another component of spicy driver jumps in that opens that HLTO file, uh, selects the right parser and at the same time hooks up the standard input and connects to tons of runtime libraries that spicy brings us that is that are required to for example, for the data types, we have the list or vectors, for example, right? So, and then that part, so the right-hand side here does the parsing at runtime and the left-hand side does the jitting. So, and um, we didn't see that file, but there's some, some possibility to separate that, of course, right? So, so there's options to um, um, just dump that file and keep it for later. And for example, use that in some Zeek plugin that you compile once and then just load into your Zeek installation, right? So let's talk about that later but let's so i hope uh, spicy is a safe language i hope so and where you don't need to write any c plus plus where you can be declarative and procedural at the same time as you wish and as you need we are on github we have um, slack and we can easily integrate it into zeek so let's do that uh, let's do that after I go over this. Okay, so we we we, we have like we've been working since last Zeek week. We have um, released a major version, the first major version after last year's Zeek week, and have been working on breaking out parts of Zeek that were included in Spicy previously. We moved them out of Spicy, so Spicy is now a thing that generates parsers for you, and we move the interfacing with Zeek into a um, um, Zeek plugin, right? the package, I think is the nomenclature, right? This is a package, yes. So spicy plugin, which does all the hooking up. And then we had analyzers in, in spicy that we moved into a separate package, which um, uses spicy plugin. And then for example, provides um, um, yeah, analyzers for certain protocols. We improved robustness. We worked on the runtime libraries. So they have more features. Documentation got, of course, it's always getting better and more. And we support more platforms now. Our latest release is a one to two, one to one, but we're working on one three zero. And um, Robin hinted already what's going on there. So we um, cleaned up the way we encode information in the AST. That's um, stuff you don't see as a user necessarily, but it like removes um, whole classes of bugs, um, is faster, and also allows us to do transformation on ASTs. And um, we can also add. We'll also add optimizations to spicy ESTs, and that's interesting because not um, emit code that, um, for example, cannot be removed anymore, right? So we emit C++ code that we uh, compile, but um, if we can avoid emitting C++ code, we can make that whole um, process for user faster and also produce smaller artifacts in the end, right? Okay, so now let's talk about Zeek, since we have that out of the way. So in, um, if we integrate Zeek, that looks like slightly similar. So the, this is um, um, basically rotated 90 degrees to the picture I showed you before, but we still have some grammar here. And then we have some HLTO files here. So there's some JIT, the spicy plugin that has some component that can JIT some grammar into some HLTO file. That is special now because we also consume some extra glue code that tells um, that carries extra information how to expose that analyzer into Zeek. And then we can create that HLTO file with some spicy installation we have on the system, right? So that's not packaged as a, a Zeek package, but that's um, present as a, for example, as a distro package or whatever way you want that was installed. There. And then we have that HLTO file and can hook that into spicy plugin again in another component that can um, um, look in basically in module lookup paths, discover these HLTO files, then announce to Zeek what kind of analyzers are present because Zeek has different, I mean, has package analyzers, um, file analyzers, protocol analyzers, I mean, at least the ones we support in Spicy, and then can hook that into the machinery of Zeek on the left hand side that gets fed 
package data via the Zeek event engine, right? So we want to, so this all kind of works and you can do that, but um, I'll show you how to make that kind of simpler um, building on what Christian just, just showed you. So where we, where we don't write any CMake files, we don't write, we don't write C++, of course. Okay. So what I did is I, I took Christian's um, template that we have up and kind of tried to build on it, but um, I kind of settled for now on an extra template repository or set template source here, template repository. So I have that just create a new package from that template, give it some package deal. It's something Christian just showed you, right? And then we'll ask you for two, two um, so we will need some module name and we pick CSV naive here. So this is some user input that you see here and some analyzer name. And we just, let's just call that analyzer CSV because that matches the data type we had in our grammar initially, right? By accident, complete, complete accident. And that dumps out um, some files for us and some analyzer that is um, that we can build on. So I, I kind of, then you see some, spicy grammar file, some analyzer spicy file. You see some EVT file, that glue code that hooks into Zeek. Then you have some extra, you might want to write some extra Zeek code that is specific, uh, some extra spicy code that is specific to hooking that um, grammar into Zeek. So you can write, probably want to write lots of Zeek, um, Zeek code, for example, defining data types, logs, all that stuff. You can, might want to define, um, package signatures, and um, we have all kinds of nasty CMake stuff scattered all over this, right? That you don't need to look at, it, hopefully. Yeah, you don't need to touch most of these files. We have testing harness here and um, some support files that are kind of tricky, how you discover spice in the system. And these files are um, marked with to-dos, that's the approach here, that you could potentially just grab over this and then just address to-dos one after the other and then you're done. But let's do something else here instead. Let's instead do some testing driven approach, right? So let's go in and just paste in the grammar we had um, just, um, that I just shown you. This is the grammar on the right-hand side that I showed you. And the left-hand side is what is in that template. See some to-do here. So that some grabbing for to-do would have landed you here eventually. And we just, let's just replace what we have on the left-hand side with what we have on the right-hand side, right? So let's check whether the tests pass. So we, like Christian mentioned, builds heavily on, on Git ZKG. Let's create a commit and then just fire up ZKG tests. So this will um, behind the scenes build the, um, the pa um, package for us. And then it will also execute the test harness that we have there. And that immediately crashes because we have changed some data types here, right? So we should probably touch that, right? So that log file that ZKG tells us about mentions something about some payload field that we removed. Okay, so we need to fix that as, as well. Let's look at that EVT file, right? So this is not, a, so this is um, slightly trimmed for the slide, but this is basically what you have in there. So this is the um, glue code that tells, um, that allows you to um, basically interface spicy analyzers with Zeek and um, always has some, block like this, this declares some analyzer, some protocol analyzer by default. And um, this is not what we want for our CSV analyzer. And then it hooks some events. So this is like some, when some CSV value is passed, it will invoke some Zeek function, right? So left-hand side here is spicy, right-hand side is, is Zeek. So we need to um, adjust that. So what we are doing is we go to that link here, like in the full template that I have online, you actually have the, the skeleton for a file analyzer as well. So we mm -hmm. build a file analyzer because CSV is a file format. And I looked into some PCAP and I see that um, Zeek exposes that um, type with uh, that file CSV files over HTTP traffic, for example, as um, um, the mind type text plane. In a real analyzer, you would do that probably differently. You would look into your HTTP traffic, consume that MIME type somehow, and then clean up your data after the end. But this is what I do for the demo here. And then we import our um, module for the grammar. So this um, pulls on the grammar. And now we have the CSV type available. Once we are done parsing that CSV value, we want to Zeek event that we just, so this is a different event, right? So let's, Let's say we want to trigger an event that is in some namespace CSV and is called rows that 
takes like um, a file and the rows that we extracted. Let's say that's the event we want to extract. You would, I mean, for real analyzer, you would do something more sophisticated potentially, hopefully. Right, so let's, are we done? I mean, we can test. Nah, we're not done because we kind of, we look at what's happening actually here. So we are done with the building this time. We built successfully so that EVT file was accepted, but um, the testing didn't pass. Right, so there's, you see there's a test skipped here. There's a test that checks that whether the analyzer can be loaded, that was successful. And there is another test here that tries to pass data with that analyzer without involving Zeek, just testing the grammar. So this would pass some, um, um, some pipe some string to that analyzer and try to um, extract data with it that doesn't match anymore what we have here. So one test failed and one was skipped and we should fix these before we are done. So let's look at that parser test. So you, when you're developing a grammar, you should write some, some small tests for your grammar to make sure that you can actually extract data. And you don't need to look at PCAPs for that with SPICY because SPICY is a standalone tool that can just consume data. So what this, like the default template does, it just compiles. So what you see is invoke SPICY C on some grammar file, just in time compiles that and then dumps out that HRTO file. So we can run many tests on that. And then we can, produce some data, some byte stream here, and then pipe that into some spicy dump tool that would give us like a, um, basically a string representation of the past data, invoke our parser together with that pre-compiled grammar. So this should be very thick, uh, quick, dump that to some output file and then diff that. That's a standard B test, right? But we should adjust that. So let's adjust that. So we just touch, we don't touch the first line, we just like pipe different data here. So what we, we do now is we pipe some CSV like data into that, store that in the output. And we can also pass some data where we don't expect to pass something successfully. So this doesn't pass obviously, right? Because it doesn't end into a new, in a new line, like one of our naive requirements. So then we can also update the baseline. So the baseline look would, would look like this, right? So we see that we extract some data here. We can look at that, add that to the repository, create a commit and um, test, but let's first also, and also look at that other skip test. So what, why was that skipped? So this test required some trace, right? So this what this test wants to do is it wants to load some trace into Zeek and then invoke, actually invoke some Zeek script that needs to be specified here and then check whether the analyzer produced um, or whether yeah, we see like some side effect of that analyzer, right? So that trace is not present. So this requirement is false and that test is skipped. So let's fix that, right? So let's add some trace there. So I put in some, some sample trace here for my small example. So I can remove that line. I know that file is there and then I can just produce some output here. And um, so this line is very long, but what this does, it's basically it's the same line as above, but it sets up some diff, some canonifier because Zeek, Zeek files from PCAPs, they have timestamps and we want to normalize them out. And what we do in this test now, so this is something you would have in your main.zeek file, some core functionality of your Zeek plugin, is this rows function, but let's just write it for, for brevity inside this um, um, test file. So we consume some file and some rows which is a vector of vector of string in Zeek language. So our um, vector of vector of bytes became a vector of vector of string in Zeek land. And then we can produce some very useful diagnostic messages from, our, from the stuff we have learned about that data we saw on the wire. So here we trigger a warning, for example, and um, run that test, produce some baseline and um, diff that and then check. So are we done now? So the test pass. So we, can we install that? We can ZKG install that file. And um, we're done, right? We have written, we have taken a simple grammar, have adjusted an EVT file, and we have also done some useful testing. And we have, um, basically, so since we committed everything here along the way, we have something we can push to some repository somewhere that other people can install that we can deploy in our infra. And we didn't touch CMake, we didn't touch C++ at all, and we're done, right? So let's see, yeah, that plugin after installing, it's actually available, right? So mission accomplished, I would say. Of course, there are more to-dos for us to look at. So this is something you should look into before you publish. So we want to have a summary of our package. We want to have a description. 
for protocol analyzers, we want to do some DPD signature, signatures. For file analyzers, we can remove that. We should probably move our smart um, reporting to some Zeek module, maybe define data types there. And um, also, we could write some small uh, other stuff here, but we, we don't, didn't need that here. We can you would just remove that if you don't need it or you adjust it. Okay. So this is kind of like the summary again. So we have um, Spicy on GitHub. And um, please hit us up if you run into issues, if you like it, if you um, have ideas for features. We have a very extensive, I think we have pretty good documentation. I think Robin is very diligent and keeps pushing me for good documentation. Package template is here. And we also have a, a repo of the analyzers that we moved out of the spicy tree previously, where you can look for inspiration, how other people or we ourselves kind of solved different problems. And you can always find us on Slack for discussion, feedback, socializing. Thank you. Benjamin, thank you so much for that talk. Um, up next, we have Bern Paxson with Compiling Zeek Scripts. And if you have more questions for Benjamin about Spicy, uh, anything he presented, you can join the Zeek Week uh, Talk 6 uh, track over there or channel over there, or you can jump into the Spicy channel on the Zeek Slack uh, website. So again, thank you so much, Benjamin.